I love superheroes. I've been cosplaying long before it was cool at Comic-Con. But I didn't read my first superhero comic until I was about 10 or 11 years old. I'll never forget it. You don't forget your first time. Amazing Spider-Man number 347, in which the villainous Venom whisks Spider-Man away to a tropical island where they're to fight to the death. Think about that. Isolated, facing a darker version of yourself, is there no better picture of adolescence? It was the perfect time for me to read that comic book at age 10. That's when I learned that superhero comics have long been an allegory for America's ills. Think about Action Comics number one. Superman's first big bad guys weren't Brainiac or Lex Luthor, but corrupt politicians and greedy landlords. In Captain America Comics number one, Cap's punching Hitler in the face, something every red-blooded American wanted to do at that time. We could take the most complex issues and project ourselves into these characters we've created to create simple solutions. Like in Look Magazine, when Superman picks up Hitler and Stalin and just drops them off at the UN for trial, solves a four-year war in two pages. <laughs> of course, the war did end, the depression was over, and superheroes got weird. <laughs> they weren't as needed anymore because America's problems were more complex and subversive in the 1950s. Fortunately, there was one man that thought to bring that complexity to the forefront. The man, Stan Lee. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't get enough of that. Stan was ready to quit comics. He was tired of writing monster and romance stories, but he got one assignment he thought would be his last. Write a superhero team-up book. So he did. Fantastic Four number one. It sold and he liked writing it, so he wrote more. X-Men, Avengers, Spider-Man. Now, these were characters helping to solve the world's problems, but they had problems of their own. The thing has body issues, okay? The X-Men are victims of prejudice. Spider-Man has to grab bread and eggs for Aunt May on his way to stopping the shocker from robbing a bank. You know, problems we could all relate to. But Stan's greatest contribution to superhero culture was no doubt setting these stories in New York City. Forget Gotham and Metropolis. Might as well be Oz. New York really exists. And this is a place where the American dream comes true. So by setting superheroes there, their dreams are coming true alongside us. It was an incredible contribution in a nation that was mourning the death of a president that was still suffering from racial inequality and tensions. Green Arrow and Green Lantern experienced those tensions firsthand when they toured America's countryside in their comic, stopping alien invasions as much as dealing with real issues like human rights issues or drugs. Green Arrow's sidekick, Speedy, perhaps prophetically named, became addicted to drugs. And you'll see that the look on Green Arrow's face is one of any concerned father, older brother or friend that discovers a loved one in this predicament. You see, the problems in America in the 60s and 70s, of course, as we know, were more complex. So too were superhero conflicts. You can't punch drug abuse in the face, not for lack of trying in comics. But in the 80s, the Watchmen and the Dark Knight Returns dragged these dark elements of reality into those funny book pages. These are the best graphic novels on any top 10 list. Read any geek magazine or blog, they'll tell you. They reflect reality. Imagine a Batman, birthed in 1939, aging with his readership. So come 1986, he's retired. Who would his villains be? Not the Joker or the Catwoman, but nuclear war, Reaganomics, a bipartisan government, fear of nuclear attack. And so once again, Superman and his friends helped us solve our problems, the enemies of the common man. This trend continues today in movies that have come out, say, oh, I don't know, last week? <laughs> Think about 2008 when Iron Man came out. Awesome. Tony Stark, a weapons dealer in the Middle East, injured in an attack, his heart wounded, practically replaced. Is there no greater symbol for America in 2008? I'm not asking you to believe that, only to read these stories with depth. In Avengers 2, Age of Ultron came out last week, go see it, but no spoilers here. The lesson is clear. This is the therapy 
we work together to solve these problems. You might have power, but when we team up and work as a community, there is no greater force. When I moved back to this community in 2010, I went to college in California. I couldn't find a comic that dealt with immigration or a finger-wagging governor or a fame-seeking sheriff or gun control, so I made one. <laughs> it's called Amazing Arizona Comics, and in it, we're not alone. We're not facing a dark version of ourselves. We always have our heroes to keep us company. Thank you.